Welcome back. You're tuned into Chartbusters. You're on CNBC TV 18. Well, as promised, let's get chatting with the next management. That's High Tech Pipes. They've achieved their highest ever sales volume in the month of, uh, you know, for the quarter ended. FY24 as well as for FY24 as well. Brokerage House Antique, they as well are bullish on the stock. They have a buy rating with an aggressive target price. Well, uh, let's get chatting with Mr. Anish Pansal, the CEO of the company who joins us on the show. Hi, Anish. Good morning and congratulations on a good showing in your operational performance in FY24. Now, on this base of closure on 400,000 tons, what kind of a sales volume growth can you deliver since your Sanand facility has been commissioned, point number one? And also the EBITDA per ton, where do you see it scaling to in the coming year? Because there'll be operating leverage that'll be uh, playing out as well. Good morning, Nigel. Uh, thanks so much uh, for the appreciation. Uh, with the new facility the, at Sanand, uh, you know, we have added uh, approximately 1.25 lakhs to 1.5 lakh tons uh, at Sanand facility. And I'm sure that, you know, uh, the company will contribute at least lakh to 1.5 lakh tons extra over FI24. And uh, regarding EBITDA per ton, you can uh, see that, you know, the company's uh, EBITDA per ton is growing, you know, steadily year on year. And uh, I think within this year, you know, our target is around four to 4,500 rupees per ton, EBITDA per ton. And uh, with the new SKUs and new verticals, uh, we are very optimistic and excited about the current financial year. So you said one and a half lakh, uh, uh, you know, additional contribution. That would mean for the next year, you'll deliver a number of close to around 500 to around 550,000 tons. Is that correct? Absolutely. Right. That's correct. Um, you know, uh, on the EBITDA per ton itself, I wanted your thoughts on the value-added product mix because you have a stated target of taking it to 50% plus by FY26. What's the glide path to that? Currently, it's about 31%. So next year, what is it likely to be? And once it hits the 50% mark in FY26, what is your EBITDA per ton likely to be? So, Bangalore, uh, we are targeting at least, uh, you know, the total share of VAPs uh, this year uh, to reach around 40%. Uh, this will happen uh, due to our new uh, products that we have introduced, like solar talk tubes, uh, the color-coated sheets, and uh, there are some special SKUs related to bullet, uh, bullet train projects. So, uh, all in all, I think 40% is a conservative number to consider this year, and 50% we are sure uh, for FY26. So, and this year you mean? Our blended EBITDA per ton uh, should hover between 4,000 to 5,000 rupees per ton. So, by this year you mean FY25, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, the other parameter where you have done quite a lot of improvement is the working capital days. I recall it being close to around 80 days. As of the last uh, you know, few quarters, it's come down to, I think, sub-50, around 49 days. Uh, where does this number stabilize at? So right now, we are working between 45 to 50 days, as you said. But you know, going forward, you know, our focus is uh, towards you know, further shrinking of this working capital. And I think you know, 30 to 35 days is an optimist number that uh, we can consider for next two financial years. And FI26, your peak utilization should be what, 70%? Yeah, peak utilization is 70%. Absolutely. So that means that this year you do about 535,000 uh, tons of volumes. The year after that, assuming it's 1 million tons of capacity, you would do close to 7 lakh tons of volumes. Is that uh, correct? Yeah, that is absolutely correct. 6.5 to 7 lakh tons is our targeted volume for FI26. And of which 50% will come in from VAP. What's the margin differential between the two? Approximately 1,000 to 2,000 rupees per ton, depending on product oh. to product and SKU to SKU. Okay, that's why you're saying that you'll head towards 5,000 rupees uh, in FY26, right? Absolutely. That's, that's Got the target. It. Got it. Uh, How is your balance sheet looking, uh, Anish? If you could uh, help us out... Uh, you know, you had issued some warrants which got converted as well to the promoter and the non-promoter group. Your interest per quarter is around 9 to 10 crores. So, uh, you know, how do you see that uh, this number moving? So, Nigel, if you see, you know, over the last two to three years, you know, we have, uh, you know, while, while expanding, we have brought down our long-term debt. And I think in coming one to two years, uh, we will be totally, uh, you know, debt-free company. Uh, I'm talking about the long-term debt. And the working capital also, you know, as the number of working capital days is shrinking, so the extra requirement of working capital will also, you know, it will be stagnant where it is right now. So all in all, you know, the, uh, you know, the financially, uh, the balance sheet will look uh, much, much, uh, you know, improved going forward. What's the outstanding uh, 
order that you have right now in terms of volumes and value? So currently, you know, approximately 250 crores of orders are in hand. Uh, this uh, relates to various projects, uh, you know, central government projects and, uh, you know, the orders from our distributors. And uh, I think, you know, this is a healthy number and, you know, this is a recurring orders uh, that we uh, get from our customers, our long-term customers. So, you know, uh, this is the ideal number. Got it. Okay. So, uh, you know, the, you, are, you have visibility of four to five months, four months approximately, I think so, going by that number. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, the orders are recurring and, you know, we, we the, the yeah. flow of orders is, is uh, very, very continuous. So, uh, okay. you know, we've been uh, like worried on that. All right, Anish, you know, you're going to go from around 3.9 lakh tons in the next two years to close to around 7 lakh tons. That's a big, big jump. It's more than a 50% jump. Now, I'm looking at the promoter holding. It's come down from around 59% to around uh, 53%. That's because of conversion of warrants, higher number of issued to non-promoters. Where does this number stabilize at, uh, assuming full conversion? I ask you this is because as the promoter of the company and you've seen quite a few cycles, now things appear to be on track. What is the holding you like to maintain at? So, you know, there's a still pending conversion and after, after this, I think our holding will uh, be around, you know, 57 to 58% uh, in the current financial year. Right. And would you like to at some point uh, increase it? Yeah, we are actively looking out forward. It. You know, there is uh, like CapEx also ongoing, uh, you know, so we have to balance uh, both the things. So, so let's see how it goes. All right. And... Uh, just, just finally, you said you have an order book of nearly four to five months at hand. In the very near future, we have elections and that usually muddles around with the order, order cycle, right? So, would there be any disruption? What kind of order inflows are you targeting next year? So, Manglim, there may be, you know, like a month or so, there may be, a, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, like uh, a normal, uh, but uh, I think after post elections, I see, you know, a robust uh, uh, spend on the infrastructure side. I, I think all the schemes like Jal Jeevan Mission or, you know, the railway, board updations, energy, renewable energy, all these sectors are going to, you know, uh, outperform. And uh, pipes, you know, like since it's a, such a versatile product and, uh, you know, I, I'm sure that, you know, the demand uh, is going to come uh, our way. And we are we are ready uh, with all the capacity, the fresh capacity. So once, you know, the everything uh, gets in order, so I think we can leverage on that. Got it. Final question then, before we let you go, uh, it, is there potential to export as well? I mean, if you could give us a sense on that front, since you'll be having additional capacity, what is it? Where is it headed? So the new plant that we have set up is in Gujarat, and Gujarat is the ideal uh, destination for, for exports. And uh, with this new capacity, uh, you know, we would certainly be eyeing towards exports. Uh, you know, once the international prices, they stabilize, I think last one year we have seen, you know, the prices being extremely volatile. But uh, this year, you know, after the, after the normalcy, I think the exports uh, are going to come uh, in does. And the new FTAs that India is signing, like, you know, with Australia, with the UAE right. and UK, EU and all these things, I think, uh, you know, the export opportunity is huge. Uh, but it's just a matter of time, you know. The, I'm just currently, you, so currently you don't have any exports, is it? Uh, very minimal. And what will be the ideal number if, since you've commissioned this facility in Gujarat and you say that it's got tremendous potential? What should it contribute, say, by FI26 as a percentage of your total mix? Over 10 to 15 percent. 10 to 15 percent. Is it a viable business when it comes to EBITDA per ton or the earnings that you make from exports? Yes, absolutely. You know, exports, you know, because the destinations are Europe, Australia, you know, all these are all mature markets, you know, where uh, the, you know, mm. the, the price is, uh, you know, not a big issue because, uh, you know, they are anyways importing from the European countries. So India can be a very big challenger that. Got it. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, Anish, for joining in. Wishing you and your team all the best. You've started the new year in style uh, with regard to the numbers that you've delivered. Last few sessions, the stock as well has gained. Wish you well. We're going to hold you at all these numbers that you have given us in the last few minutes or so.